Hey guys, and welcome back to video number seven. So today we are finally going to go ahead and take a look at automations using Node-RED. So remember in our second video, we did that install of the add-ons and with that add-ons, we also had Node-RED included on there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and make use of uh, Node-RED and just to set up our basic first automation. So we finally have something that we can actually call home automation and then um, I know you do have the option within home assistant itself to set up automations however I found that it's quite limited and it can get confusing so they try they're trying to make it simple and they are working through all that process however at this point I would still highly recommend using node red for automations instead of using the Home Assistant's interface itself, unless you want to go ahead and into the programming on the back end of Home Assistant. So I, uh, I would highly recommend just using Node-RED itself. So with that said, we could just quickly go ahead and jump in. There we go guys, so as you can see, everything looks exactly the same as we left off last time. The only thing that does look maybe a bit different is the way the layout is, but all the items are still exactly the same except for the uh, Google Chromecast that I added in here. But that should be it, so the rest of the information is exactly the same. If you did watch video 2, you'll notice that I did add in Node Red right here. If you don't see the option for Node-RED, uh, you can check out that previous video and uh, on how to install it. Or you can just go ahead and enable it to show up in the sidebar, which will make it a lot more easier for you to just click on it right here. So once you have that enabled, it'll show up right here. We're going to go ahead and click on uh, not ESP Home, Node-RED. It'll show up right here. So just go ahead and click on that and just wait for that to load up real quick there we go and as you can see we have nothing in here at the moment and this is the node red basic layout so how it's going to look so our trigger or the automation that we're going to go ahead and add today is just a normal once the kitchen detects movement it'll go ahead and turn on the kitchen lights and then we can go ahead and take a look to customize that from there so the first thing we need to do is once we're in Node-RED, you'll see we have flows up here. That's just the automations that we can go ahead and set up. So I'm not going to go in too deep into every function of Node-RED. We'll just go through it as we set up automations. The hardest part of Node-RED is getting your first one in there. But once you have that set up, um, everything else comes fairly easy to set up and simple. So the more you set it up, the better you get. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and use event state. So we have home assistant right here and we want to use the event state, which will be as soon as a state change for a specific entity. So we'll add it right in here, double click on it. You'll see it asks us for a name. Uh, the server is home assistant. It'll use home assistant entity ID. All we need to do is we can just go ahead and start type the name. So as soon as I hit K, You'll see it shows us shows us all the senses or all the entities we have with that name. So right here is the kitchen PIR. And that was in the multi-sensor video that we did previously. I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. Once we have that selected, uh, the kitchen PIR, we need to go ahead and specify the state. So because it's a binary sensor, it's going to be on or off. So as soon as it detects motion, it'll be listed as on. So we need to set that to on. And that's it. So now we have this listed in here. So if the kitchen sensor, the PIR sensor, is set to on, meaning it detected movement, we need to go ahead and trigger the lights. So turn on the lights, which will be a call service function right here. So we'll go ahead and drag that in here, double click on it. And right here, it'll give us a bit more information. You can give it a name. I'm just going to go ahead and say on the domain, we can go ahead and say home assistant the service is turn on and then the entity ID, which is going to be the kitchen lights. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in K and there we go, light kitchen and click on done. And now in order to go ahead and connect that, we see we have two options right here. 
if state is false, meaning it's not the movement is not detected, we want it if state is true, if movement is detected. And we drag it over there. And that's it. Now we have our first automation in there. Now it won't be active. We first need to go ahead and hit the deploy option right here. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy that real quick. And as you can see, it shows disconnected. Just wait for it to update real quick. There we go. So it is connected. So I'm just quickly going to walk over. I think you can see just at the corner. I'm just going to walk there and it should go ahead and trigger that PIR sensor and the light should come on. I still I have that LED strip that we connected. That's also in the kitchen normally. So I just moved that under that camera. So I can just quickly show you guys as soon as I move over, it'll turn on those lights. There we go. So as you guys can see, it did trigger and it's telling you when the last state happened as well. So once we have that listed in there, you'll see it did turn on, but now we don't have a way of turning it off unless we use the Home Assistant interface, which is not very convenient, is it? So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So what we could do is we can go ahead and add in a function that'll trigger a time delay and then turn off. So what we'll do is we're not going to use a home assistant trigger. It's just going to be the normal trigger function within node red. So right here we have a trigger function. Just go ahead and drag that in here, double click on it. Then we have the send. Now the first time it receives a message from this, as soon as it doesn't detect motion, we don't want it to send anything because that'll cause some, uh, or the lights to turn on and off constantly. We want it to send nothing. It needs to be blank. Then we want to wait for, we want to add in a delay. Now, usually you'll go ahead and say five minutes for this video, I'm just gonna use 10 seconds. And then the last option that's very, very important is to extend delay if new message arrives. So maybe you're busy in the kitchen and you want that kitchen light to stay on while you're in the kitchen. As long as the, the sensor detects movement within the kitchen, it'll go ahead and stay on until the last time it didn't receive any motion for the amount of time that we specified. So that's why we enable this option right here. Item to send is going to be nothing. We just leave it as is. It'll just pass through that message. Click on done. Then we go ahead and drag this over. So remember the if the statement is false, meaning that it's not detecting movement, it'll go ahead and wait 10 seconds. And then we go ahead and turn off the lights again. So for that, we can go ahead and take a look at using the call service option right here again. We can drag that over from here to call service. We just need to go ahead and specify on the domain home assistant and we want to turn off now the entity ID, which will be the kitchen lights. And that should be it. So now I can just go ahead and hit save. And there we go. So now we have it set up. We ne just need to remember to hit the deploy. Guys, always remember before testing, just hit deploy or you it won't be active. So now if I go ahead and trigger that automation or if I trigger the binary sensor, it'll turn on the lights. It'll wait 10 seconds after it doesn't detect any more movement and it'll go ahead and turn off the lights. So let's quickly test that out. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the lights here and open up node red again. And I'm going to go ahead and trigger that sensor. I should have thought of this before create, starting the video. I should have moved that sensor, but okay. You guys get the idea. As soon as I walk into the kitchen, it turns on. And as you can see, everything worked as it should because it waited 10 seconds after it doesn't detect, didn't detect any movement and it went ahead and automatically turned off that sensor. So we have everything set up that way now. One more thing that we may need to go ahead and take a look at 
is adding in a specific time of day or when this should be active because we don't want the lights to go ahead and turn on if the sun is out or we already have light coming in so the way we can do that is just by adding in a time um, function right here so between the state change and the trigger to send that command we can go ahead and add in a time function so what we'll do is we'll just click here to search for time and right here we have a time range option now we definitely want to use the time range because it's going to be between a specific uh, time so only when it's dark outside so between like at night and till the morning that needs to be active so in order to use that we can just go ahead and drag this right in here we can double click on it now one thing we can do it's going to ask me for my location i'm just going to say allow because it'll go ahead and add it in automatically right here so it'll add in your um, location remember that's going to be if you're using these these specific sunrise and sunset functions if it doesn't work or your location is not working you can go to the website right here and just select say option on the map or a location on the map where you are located and that'll go ahead and adjust according to the current um, times or the time zone that you're in so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and view i have my location listed in here we have the start time and then the end time and if you take a look at the help section so we have node help right here and it'll show you all the options that you can use in here so what i want to do is i want to have this active at sun as soon as the sun sets so as soon as as sunset starts i'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in here so as soon as the sunset start and then again at sunrise we need to go ahead and disable that so we can go ahead and paste that in here so it's going to start from sunset until sunrise and that's it so we have our location added in here and we have the start time and the end time which will be only in the night click on done there we go so in order to use it we need to go ahead and break this connection so i'm just going to click on that line click on delete drag this one up here we can move these uh, nodes around and then we can go ahead and say right here link it up there and then we have two options in here within the times that we specified which means only at night and with uh, outside those times so if i do this and i drag it in here that'll go ahead and be active as soon as i deploy it it'll only go ahead and trigger that information while it is night time so if I deploy it, it won't work now because it's daytime at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and change this without. So I'm just going to use it outside of that environment, meaning that it would be active just for this demonstration real quick. I just showed you how to add it in here because we may want to go ahead and edit some additional information. One thing that could be a problem with this specific setup is going to be if we have RGB lights. So in order to show you guys this, um, maybe you're changing the color of the lights and it's going to cause some issues. So we can turn this on, but we can also set the color to red, for example. Okay, cool. The, the color is on. But now Home Assistant is going to remember the state that the light was last time in. So if I go ahead and activate the motion now, it's going to go ahead and trigger it to red. So just to show you guys, if I go over to node red, and I'm quickly going to trigger that. Remember, I just swapped over my times to without uh, outside the time zone and not inside, which means it'll be st it'll still be active. So if I I'm gonna go ahead and trigger that real quick, and you'll see it's going to turn the lights to red, which is maybe a bit of a problem. As you can see, that's not gonna work for us. We need the lights to be white. So obviously, the trigger again to turn it off so an easy way around it it'll be is if we double click on this one right here you'll see we have data right here and this is json format so i'll quickly you do a sample code for you guys as well an easy way to check it is if we go to our developer tools right here so within we're still in home assistant 
I'm going to go ahead and right click, open a new tab. So once we have that open in a new tab, it's a bit easier navigating between the uh, tabs instead of clicking over and going back and forth within the program. We can go in here and in the developer tools, we click on services and then in the specific service, we can go down and look for the lights. So if we go right here, we say light turn on. So if we click on it, Right here, it'll give us the entity. So we need to go ahead and select that entity. Mine is already selected because I've been in here. And then you'll see it gives us all the uh, type of states that we can go ahead and add in here. Now, what I did, I have my entity ID, which is just the light kitchen, the color name. So if we look down here, we have color name and you can go ahead and set that color name to the specific color. And then we have the brightness. And if we look down in the parameter under brightness, you'll see it has a range between zero and 255. So if I go ahead and change this to blue, for example, it'll go ahead and turn those lights to blue. Now we want it to be able to turn it to white. So if we call this service, you'll see it turns that lights to white. And this is the code that we need to go ahead and add in to our node red so it doesn't cause an issue when we had the colors at different before it turns on in our node red automation in order to have this always turn that light to the specific color we need to go ahead and add it in the data option now i'm going to click in here it's a bit easier doing it this way so all you need to do is and i have this in this description as well just so you guys can um, have an example i'm going to add in the brackets and as you can see, it automatically added that closed one in there. I'm going to paste that code. And as you can see, it's given me that there is, it, it's telling me that's an error. So how this works is we need to add in quotation marks for all of our items in here. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and add in the quotation mark, sorry, like that. The light kitchen needs to be in a quotation marks. The color needs to be in quotation marks color name so as you can see i'm just adding all of them within the quotation marks so it's not really that hard we just modified it a really tiny bit and then obviously after each line we need to go ahead and add in a comma and there we go so the last one does not need one we're going to go ahead and close it so just each line and that should be it so once we click on done so now that we have that in there, we can just click on done. Remember, we need to go ahead and deploy first before that'll be active. So we go ahead and hit deploy. And to test it, we need to go ahead and change that lights to red real quick. Uh, so we click on here, we set it to red. There we go. I'm going to turn it off. And then if we go back to our home assistant now, it has been deployed. So now if I go ahead and walk over, it's going to turn it on and set the color to white with maximum brightness. And that's exactly what we want it to be. So let me qu quickly go ahead and trigger that uh, PIR sensor and we can take a look. There we go. And as you can see, it did turn on and the lights went from red to the previous state to white. And that's it. So that's the first automate automation that we went ahead and added in there. There we go, guys. That's going to be it for this video. Um, we did cover a few things. There was just a quick automation just to get you guys started. I know you guys will definitely be going ahead and playing in there. If you guys do get stuck with something, you can go ahead and ask me in the comments below. I'd be happy to go ahead and take a look for you. If you have any ideas or something that you would like to automate in the future, we're definitely going to go ahead and spend a lot more time within node red as we move along in this series as well so there's a lot more automations that we can go ahead and add in there but for now i'm think i'm gonna leave it there i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week